Let me start by giving you a bit of context. Today I'm going to introduce you to a tool called the Problem Definition Sheet. This tool is really helpful as it helps to give your project definition. It's part of a course that's been designed for the 2020 Delivery Academy. It's based on real stories and it's been used on many real projects. It's a universal tool that's used not only in the public sector but also in the private sector. And we'll give you a chance at the end to try out this tool on your own problem by giving you an exercise. So that's the context. This is our patient, uh, Harold. We're going to be using him as an example to take you through this tool today. Harold has diabetes. Like many diabetes sufferers, he's admitted to A&E. Unfortunately, within 12 days, he was readmitted to hospital via A&E. Angela is the general manager um, that deals with this pathway. She's very aware of the problems that the patients are facing that go through this pathway. She knows that patients shouldn't be readmitted so quickly and that readmission re rates are much lower in other hospitals. So she's wondering what's going on. A common question that's asked at the beginning of projects is, how do I start my project? There are a lot of things that can go wrong. Here are just a few of them. The scope was unclear, so we ended up trying to do everything. Everyone seemed to be doing overlapping bits of work. No one knew what all the different pieces of evidence meant as a whole. And the PowerPoint slides had no power and little point. The tool, the problem definition sheet, it's often abbreviated to PDS, helps to overcome some of these problems. And we'll take you through the basic elements of this now. This is what the sheet typically looks like. It starts off with a basic question that you're trying to resolve, a question that's specific, time-bound and succinct. It then asks who are the key players, the stakeholders, decision makers in your project and who's going to be resourced on it. It also asks what your desired outputs and criteria for success are, such as metric, metrics, products. Fourth part is the scope of the work, so it's really detailing what's in scope and what's out of scope. It also includes the outline, timings and milestones for the project, as well as the context for why the work's being done right now, and any constraints and dependencies slash interfaces. Doing a PDS problem definition sheet brings clarity. It also helps to foster a collective understanding of the problem ahead. It can be used as a communication device and in fact can be a collaborative endeavour. You may want to do a number of iterations of the PDS with various different stakeholders to confirm that everybody has the same understanding of the problem that you're trying to solve. Let's have a look now at an example related to Angela and Harold's problem. How can Get Welton Hospital, improve patient experience and avoid additional clinical costs by reducing readmission rates in diabetes disease by 10% during the next financial year. In the Stakeholders, Decision Makers and Project Resourcing box, there's the clinical lead, Dr. Robert Johnson, the general manager, Angela, the chief nurse and Michael, the deputy chief operating officer. The desired outputs are improved quality, delivery within the allocated time frame and improve patient experience. Specifically in scope are, is diabetes emergency readmissions only. So that means all other disease groups are out of scope. There'll be bi-weekly steering group meetings and a review of project success within six months. The context is that there's poor patient experience at the moment, an efficiency drive going on at Get Welton Hospital and also the revised NHS operating framework. Any changes need to be clinically appropriate and there must be no overall additional spending. Here's a PDS filled out for Angela's project. As you can see, we've got our basic question to be resolved. It's specific, it's succinct, it's time bound. And we have all the information that we need to really get cracking on this project. Once you're done with this, you're ready to move on to the next steps. If you'd like to try out using a PDS on one of your own projects, here are the questions you need to build your own. 
Thanks for watching. To help us improve, please leave your feedback below. If you've enjoyed this lesson and found it valuable, why not try the next lesson? Click on the links now to move on.